Hey guys, uh, I'm going to throw a platter, or actually a kind of a shallow bowl more than a platter, and then I'm going to decorate it. And I'm going to get busy. I tend to talk too much, so I'm going to just keep keep on moving here, um, so I can do this in a reasonable period of time. But the uh, the steps, of course, is just you know centering it up, pushing down kind of into a a flat, relatively flat shape, and then pulling it up. And you want, if you're throwing something fairly large, this isn't huge, but it's about 12 pounds or so, I think, uh, you want the clay to be reasonably stiff but not so stiff that you can't center. But if it's too too soft, it'll fall over, flop down pretty easily. You know, next time I'm going to do a video, that just reminds me of something, of uh, what to do. Actually, I've given it away now. Usually I do this as a, uh, a thing during a, uh, if I'm doing a workshop or something, where I make a mistake, but kind of intentionally. And then I... I, you can correct it. You can, your pot falls. You can just pick it up. You might just try this from the description. Pick it up, bat and all, flip it over, and we'll just let it fall back into shape. It'll be asymmetrical. Then let it hang between a couple boards, and it makes a really, really cool pot that way. I'll show you what I mean sometime. Okay, back to the throwing at hand. So I've got that opened up. Out, pulling up kind of a about a 45 degree angle or so, less than that. I don't want to get it too high, it'll be out of the frame. Another pull. And I'm leaving the lip fairly thick. That gives it a lot of stability. Make sure you keep the water out of the middle too. Don't let it sit there too long. Otherwise that'll cause it to crack and fall. And also make sure that you really compress the middle. I like to go in, push in from the outside toward the inside. And that really compresses the clay down. You're less likely to get a crack. If you're getting S cracks, try that. Use the rib. Practice being dexterous, using both hands, ambidextrous I should say, and also, I don't know if you can see it or not, this area right in here tends to drop if you go too far. The reason why is that's just where it goes beyond this area where it's supported, down here. So be careful, you can press to the left of that, but you can't press out beyond it very hard. If you do, it's going to drop. You get that kind of, I don't know what you call it, a beginner's shoulder is what I call it, but it comes out and it makes this dip and then it goes back up again. You don't want that. You want a nice continuous curve here. Okay. Now just in case this rim is out of, hope it's not out of sight, that is out of the frame. <laughs> okay. I'm going to now before I go any further, do a treatment to this rim. And I'm just going to do it with my fingers this time, I think. Just take my finger, support it on the inside, and push down. And you want to do this before the clay is too thin. It's actually pretty thin already, but otherwise you will cause that to buckle. So that gave a detail to the rim that I think is kind of nice. I'm going to refine this a little bit more. I wish I had brought a little bit bigger rim because this is a, a fairly wide pot. and Not rim, but I mean a, a bigger uh, rib. And uh, a small rib like this tends to leave marks. But if it covers a little more surface area, it's a little bit better. Anyway. Okay, let's just turn that out slightly. I want to get up and see where that's at. Excuse me.
Okay, you can see most of that. Not quite all of it, but most of it. Now I'm gonna not put too much of the swirl in the middle there, slightly. I don't want too much texture right there. Now, now I'm gonna take a little bit of my slip here. Just pour some slip that I mixed up. It's pretty thick. Actually, in order to speed it up, I'm gonna just dump some on there. And I can move it up. So you can see how thick it is. It's quite thick. If it's too thin, then the water will be absorbed by the clay, and that can cause the thing to, uh, to slump as well, cause your, your pot to slump. And it might actually sit there for 15, 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden you look around and it's fallen, it's cracked. You get up in this area, it's a good idea to support it with your hand, your right hand on the outside. Like, you know, when you first use slip, it is so pretty. It's just a, such a nice surface. I mean, when you put it on there and it's at this stage, it's just such a nice surface. Now, the clay obviously has a lot of iron in it. The slip has virtually no iron in it. So you will get a contrasting between the white slip and the, the brown clay when I scratch through it, which is what I'm going to do now. See. I'm going to turn my wheel so it goes the other way. Because I am better with my right hand, even though I talk about using your left hand all the time. But I'm just going to take three fingers and go like that. That's it. I think I want one more. It didn't quite go over far enough. So you're going to see that contrast when this thing is fired, and that should be kind of neat, hopefully. We'll put a little mark up in here, too. That's it. It's fun, isn't it? You can use it, platters, wide bowls like this, as your canvas do all kinds of things on it. It's really kind of neat. And then put a glaze on it that isn't so so opaque that it obscures your what you've done here. So there's lots and lots. Celadon, of course, comes to mind. But there's lots of glazes that'll work on that that, that won't obscure the, uh, the design. And also, you know, it's a three-dimensional thing, too. I don't know if you can see it, but, you know, there is a relief here. So give it a try. Let me, uh, let me know how you did. Thanks for watching. Bye.